Hi, my name is Sandy Baird, a citizen activist. I'm here with my colleague, Wafiq Faour, from Vermonters for Justice in Palestine and many other groups that are pro-peace, anti-war, and humanitarian groups. He's been a real leader in the subject of the Israeli uh, war against Gaza. And he's here tonight with me to talk about how that issue, we believe, influenced our local elections here in Burlington and also in town meetings across Vermont. Wafik was very active in keeping track of those issues, in organizing about those issues, and he is an expert, I believe, probably the best expert to talk about how that issue got into our Vermont elections, including in Burlington, how it influenced peace and a ceasefire influenced our elections, first here in Burlington and then later in the uh, same day, but in also in the town meetings. Okay, so hi, Wafik. How are you doing? Thank you, Sandy. Thank you for this introduction. Okay, so Wafik, <clears throat> um, I'm again, because I think this is such an important story that I don't think most Vermonters realize how important, particularly the ceasefire resolution was in our local elections and in the town meeting. So I wonder if you could comment on that. Let's maybe start with what participation that you actually had in the elections. On the election, or let's talk about a pre-election yes, time. Yes, good, good, good. Pre-election right. time, we were involved. and be, we, though? We, uh, Vermont for Justice in Palestine, in particular at the beginning, and later the Coalition for uh, Palestinian Liberation came uh, after Gaza war. But for four months before uh, Gaza war, we the Vermont for Justice in Palestine and other solidarity groups, we adopted uh, a resolution from a language have been brought to us by the American Friends Service Committee. Which is a committee of the Quaker. They right? are part of the yes. Quaker organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, the language is apartheid free communities. Could you explain what that means? Apartheid Free Community, because of the three major human rights organizations, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and the Israeli Human Rights Organization, Beit Salem, they study this, the situation on Palestine. It's not only occupation, it's more racism on the ground. On uh, each area, we see these uh, laws uh, of discrimination and prejudice uh, from the Israeli government and Israeli direct military occupation in many areas, uh, uh, clear within what's so-called democratic state of Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, documenting all this by these human rights organization have been adopted by many organization all over the world and they are struggling to tell small community or organization to adapt to the language that it is apartheid in Palestine. The Palestinians, they don't have the rights over there. They lost every single right possible that respect human rights and equal rights under international law. And we have to do something about it. Usually after declaring apartheid a free community, the next step, it goes is adopting BDS or boycott, divestment, and sanctions, which is it's, uh, it's, 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 it's copy and paste from the struggle of our uh, South African sisters and brothers uh, during the 80s and uh, early 90s. That's where the word apartheid comes from also, correct? This is what racism and apartheid and have been documented internationally. And here in Burlington, at one point, they declared that South African, uh, white South African treatment to the black majority is an apartheid. Right. And took a stand on that. 
to the governor of that time, uh, Governor uh, uh, Conan, uh, did that as an executive order. And she was representing all the governors of uh, New England uh, when Nelson Mandela arrived to Boston on the Boston Common. And she introduced, mm -hmm. she introduced mm -hmm. him. So Vermont has a history of seeing injustice and talk about right. it. So because three years ago, we have been discriminated against by Palestinians. Uh, the uh, so, uh, Palestinian Solidarity Group here uh -huh. in Burlington, when we introduced a resolution to recognize Palestinian human rights, equal rights, and our rights as people on the city of Burlington, we have the right to speak freely about the BDS. Uh, uh, we had... Uh, uh, we have been labeled as anti-Semitic. Uh, many institutions of this town you know, worked very hard to force the mayor and the council members to shelf that resolution. Mm -hmm. The uh, outcome of that resolution that we felt the public have different understanding to uh, what is uh, BDS, what is apartheid, and the Palestinian have the right for self-determination. We adopted the language of apartheid free community. To bring it, we refused to bring it to the council members. Mm -hmm. What we did, we uh, uh, draw an initiative uh, uh, and we wrote it uh, for the public mm -hmm. to sign it. And we went to the attorney of the town and we talked to him and we agreed on the language and we went into the corners of the streets to the farmer's market and in front of the churches on Sundays, signing people. Uh, for any initiative to be presented to the city, you have to collect 5% of the register of voters. Mm -hmm. And we met that number and above that numbers. And we signed thousands of others who are interested, mm -hmm. but they are not registered. And we helped some to register later, and we, are, we were following up with others. Which is, what is it exactly? Is to practice democracy and to respect the freedom of speech that enshrined in the Constitution and the Charter of the uh, city of Burlington. What happened is after Gaza war mm, mm -hmm. and after the invasion of the Israeli uh, to uh, Palestinian Gaza and the genocide started, you know, we had another resolution have been presented by council member Ali Dienj and okay. have been uh, rejected by uh, many institutions lobbied the mayor and uh, six other uh, council members, which is if they believe on peace, the first step is to accept ceasefire. Mm -hmm. And they rejected that ceasefire. Well, we, the whole council didn't reject it, correct? No, no, right. no. Six members right. uh, uh, voted for and six members against, and the mayor broke the tie. Mm -hmm. For that, we took notes of what's happening to our initiative mm -hmm. of apartheid free campaign. At the same time, we took notes of who voted for the uh, ceasefire and who voted against it. And uh, one of the uh, council members, uh, John Shannon, uh, voted against the ceasefire and later uh, when the city uh, forced a vote on the apartheid free campaign initiative, John Shannon again and all the Democratic member or Democratic Party member of the council voted to not let uh, this initiative to go to public and to be voted by the peoples. Mm -hmm. For that... Okay, so but the vote for the ceasefire happened first. First, okay. yes. Okay. So... A, a month earlier. Right. And 
that's in the middle of a mayoral campaign, correct? Uh, the mayor campaign was there. It wasn't heated as much at that point. At that point. Right. Uh, uh, later, when they voted down uh, to let the initiative, mm -hmm. the people's initiative, and five, more than 5% of the signature of Burlington, to let the initiative to be voted on on March 5th, you know, we took account of what's happening, you know, mainly with John Shannon, who is the handpicked for that position, the mayor position, our future uh, mayor in Burlington, by Mayor Weinberger, who is known and proud to be Zionist mm -hmm. mayor. Right. He was at a demonstration, actually, wasn't he to uh, support Israel, I think? He was right. to support Israel in this on, war. on the greens right. of UVM, yeah, right. but he never came to any of our right. uh, uh, rallies, which is we called for ceasefire, and rallies uh, to highlight uh, discrimination against Palestinian Arab Muslim right. community when the three Palestinian students got shot. Okay. Let's go back to that for a moment, okay, the, about the Palestinian students. But I um, want to, again, stress that when the ceasefire resolution came in front of city council, yes. the, that was supported by Ali Dieng, correct? He, he, he was a sponsor along with Jean uh, Bergman. Bergman and... Uh, uh, and uh, no, Joe, uh, Joe uh, McGee. Okay. What was the vote on that ceasefire resolution? It was just simple vote of uh, ceasefire. Uh, or not, correct? Uh, uh, and, and there was other elements yep. that it's watered down, I mean, including the release of the hostages, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah, get voted down, and until now we well, are- It was on party lines. Uh, there was, uh, I think, uh, um, Hannah King voted with the ceasefire right. then. And she's a Dem. She's a Democrat from... Okay, but all the other Democrats voted... And the mayor against, against. the ceasefire. And all the progressives with Hannah King voted for. Yes. Okay. All right, so on the apartheid-free resolution to put it on the ballot only. Just to put it on the ballot. I And you and I were there that night. Yes. What my argument was, was put it on the ballot. That's democratic, right? This is where if you respect the democracy and, and the Vermont. charter right. and, 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 and what we are proud about on this country, you, they should allow it to be on the ballot and let the people right. of Burlington decide. And what then was the vote on that? And it was party line seven. Again. seven seven uh, uh, council members from the Democratic Party uh, and, and the mayor were against to put it there. Their excuses was it will endanger a minority on the town, which is they meant uh, by the people who spoke on that meeting. Majority of them are uh, synagogues uh, leaders on, on our town. Uh, what they mean by that, that the Jewish community uh, feel fear if the ballot go public. Okay, let me say something else, or ask you something else. When they spoke about the Jewish community, and I was there, mm -hmm. and I met with some of that community later, mm -hmm. it's not the whole Jewish community. There were plenty of Jewish people who were for the ceasefire, and also who were for putting that on the ballot. And this but is, that, yeah. yeah, and this is what appeared later because we have a huge support from our Jewish community. Right. And they refused those synagogues leaders to represent them. Uh, but uh, the mayor and the council members who oppose both 
resolutions, they are telling the public in general and Vermoner in general that if you don't support Israel with its genocide, with its war, it means you are anti-Semitic, right, right. even if you are a Jewish. Right. or you are self-hating Jews. Right. So by doing that, they alienated a huge number of our Jewish siblings here. Mm -hmm. They alienated uh, the uh, Palestinians, the Arab and the Muslim the Arab community. And the Muslims, right. Yeah, and they endangered their lives. Yeah. And at the same time, the uh, Palestinian solidarity group that existed in colleges here in uh, UVM and others, which is they have been facing attacks for years because of their activism for justice in the Palestinian issue. Okay, in the middle of this also was the incident against the Palestinian students, correct? Yeah, that, that came up during that period, but again, the Burlington officials and the mayor, he never labeled it as a hate crime. Right. You know? Right. right. And if it happened to other community, let's say the Jewish community, the it will community. be called anti Semitic. For the black community, it will be Racist. based on race. But for the Palestinians, he refused. Even though the President of the United States, he called him minutes before the press conference. Biden did? Biden did. Called. Moreau? M Moreau. And said? Uh, he didn't say he just gave his support to the city and the mayors and do your best. But how many times uh, uh, Biden will call any city that... Especially a mayor? Uh, uh, yeah, f 43 people got shot mm -hmm. on their streets, rarely. Even the, the White House knows that it's hit a crime. But Sarah George and the mayor refused to call it as is. And I wonder if they are investigating the crime as a hate crime. Um, after, I mean, I kind of understand that they are. I might be wrong, but I will check that out. Um, as you know, I'm, an, I'm a lawyer and I am often in the court and I'm often able to ask questions like that. I believe that they probably are they have said at this point they don't have enough evidence to charge him that way, but I would guess that that's being investigated. I don't know that, but I think it's worth checking out. At least as citizens yes. and residents who are uh, living here and part of that community that get affected the most, right. we didn't hear anything about that. Not yet. Not yet. We'll see. Not yet. We'll see. It's, the, it's not over. Yeah. Yet, you know, yeah. might be. Okay, so all of these issues then, there's another issue that I think makes the Palestinian issue really part of our city. It's a local issue more and more. And that, and I wanted just to point out that we were one of the first cities in 1991 to adopt a sister city relationship with the Palestinian city of Bethlehem. Bethlehem, you know, that's a kind of a holy Christian city even, mm -hmm. you know, and we did that in 1991. We have a tripartite arrangement with also a sister city in Israel. We were one of the first cities in the United States to recognize an official relationship with the Palestinian city of Bethlehem. So it has been a local issue, although no one has paid attention much or enough to that sister city relationship. It's ongoing. Yep. It's headed up by Musa Ishaq, um, and it should be more reinvigorated, um, but it had really been ignored for years. This is un unfortunate. Uh, yeah. I mean, mainly by officials. Right. And uh, in purpose that they want to ignore the Palestinian issue as a local issue that affect our life right. over here. Not only because we have a Palestinian community and a, a big community solidarity, but American tax money. I'm sure. Uh, uh, Burlington pays over uh, nine million, uh, six million dollars, you know, annually from federal money which is if it came back to the city will solve a lot of the problems that the city uh, we have. 
uh, a lot of people excuse not to bring the Palestine issue to the table in the city hall is a foreign issue and far away countries when actually it is not always the uh, city hall took uh, many resolution. We have many uh, sister cities. Sister cities, right. uh, the question of Nicaragua and right. the Sandinista, and uh, the question of South Africa, you know, and uh, in Venezuela too, uh, w uh, and the war in Iraq, and other issues that the city discussed openly about war and peace, and they took a stand about what's happening. When it came to Palestine, and we see it because we have a lot of counsel from the progressive mm -hmm. party, that many were until recently progressive except in Palestine. Mm -hmm. So they are prog progressive on LGBTQ struggle, on the black uh, life uh, matter. Uh, matter struggle, on uh, migrant justice struggle. But when we say Palestine, it, it will become a foreign issue. Mm -hmm. We brought it back to make it mm -hmm. local not only by discussing war and peace where the United States is the major, the major supporter of the state of Israel, but it, United States and American are part of this genocide happening over there. Regardless what you see on the media, on mainstream media, that they are sending aid to the Palestinians, they are send, sending uh, bullets and bombs to Israel. So what the Palestinian needs from that kind of aid when you are shooting them at the same time? when you are using F-35 and all the American weaponry, and you, you send USS Ford and USS Eisenhower to protect Israel, you know? And uh, this is uh, a major subject. But we decided as activists over here to take a stand that the people who voted against us, mainly on the apartheid free community, to make them lose the election. And you do? Go ahead, I'm sorry. we registered a lot of people to vote Where? Okay. on, on, on uh, UVM area. Many students, they took stand and they rallied against what John Shannon and her manager, uh, Hannah King, stands for. They rallied, they did the die-in, you know, during- I didn't know that. Where? At, at, at UVM, uh -huh. and uh, they were present uh, on uh, the debate took place in UVM by the UVM unions uh, over there, sponsored by, uh, by them. Half of the questions were about Palestine. Half of the question have been asked, those two new nominees for mayor were about Palestine. Uh, and that's why Hannah King lost because of her position. Same happened to John Shannon because as we go forward, we met with, uh, with her. Who, Mayor? Uh? Go ahead, I'm sorry. You yeah. met with who? Uh, we, we met with Emma. Uh -huh. and we the new mayor. The new mayor, our new leader, mm -hmm. and we talked to her in open heart and open mind that it is necessary for her to support the ceasefire, which is she signed the uh, letter for ceasefire have been sent to President uh, Biden, uh, sponsored by uh, legislators mm -hmm. from the Democratic Party mm -hmm. and progressive too. And uh, she yes, answered the question, evening. yeah, and she answered the question if uh, the apartheid free campaign came in under her leadership, will let the people vote for it and will respect uh, the democratic process. Now it is the test as we go forward because we're going to revisit the issues of mm -hmm. Palestine on this town and where our new leaders stand. This is one. The second is everybody who supported Palestinian rights uh, and ran for council members and who spoke in behalf of the, uh, the first and the second uh, resolution, 
They won. I know. I so it. this is... They won in my ward. Yeah. They, this is to tell uh, the American public that Palestine issue is not a foreign issue. And they shouldn't be scared to vote for people who are standing for justice, a human rights, and equal rights for Palestinians. Go to the state level right. in 14 different communities. 14. 14 towns, you mean. Towns. Yeah. They voted as peoples for the ceasefire, and many of them conditioning to the aid to Israel. Not only ceasefire, conditioning the aid. What this is will tell us and tell people of Burlington and the residents of Burlington. This is will tell them, if you give the people of Vermont the right to vote on the Palestinian issue, the result will become that Palest the American people will stand for justice, for they will stand with the human rights, and they will stand with their democracy and democracy for others, because all these votes are people's vote, and telling their town that we're going to go to that direction. And this is going to be a sign to our legislators not to be scared to introduce a divestment uh, resolution and not to be scared to, uh, uh, to run again for office because they have a community standing with them when they run for office. It's pretty amazing because I don't think I think this analysis is really important to get out because what happened in Burlington, if you're right, and I think you're right, that this issue uh, really was a victory for the Palestinian people against the war against Gaza by Israel. If this is a winning issue, it should have been kind of nationally recognized. So I'm happy that you're talking about it here. Because I don't think people understood the efforts that were made behind the scenes to make those people on city council who were for the ceasefire resolution, for the ballot item being put on the ballot, they won. They all won. And, you, what, and they increased their numbers. What, uh, yes, they did. Yeah. And if your argument is correct, it could influence the national election as well. It could influence state elections everybody, everywhere. And, and, and uh, listen, uh, Emma, when she was running for mayor, her numbers wasn't great. I know, at first. And when, when, when she took a stand and she stood with us on the uh, press conference supporting the ceasefire when letter. When was that press conference? Uh, the 18th, February 18th. And she stood with? With, with uh, many of uh, members of the legislation. Oh, yeah, with the legislators. And uh, introducing the ceasefire letter. Uh-huh. Were and you there? You were there? I was there, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on that press conference, she was standing and standing solid. And I want Emma to keep standing with, with justice and standing with the Palestinians. And the future of Burlington, the should be a completely different than what Miro Weinberger want the people to remember. That city of Burlington are against peace and they are pro-war by voting the ceasefire down. They are pro-racism and discrimination when he voted against apartheid, the free community. We don't want Burlington to look like that. And or to be like that. Uh, or to be like that. Yeah, right, exactly. Yes. So, so how are you then feeling about, or what are you thinking about the future of Burlington right now? Are you hopeful or what's? By April, we're going to introduce something else. Uh -huh. We are talking to council members and we like to sit down with the democratic member of the council to educate them. Mm -hmm. At the same time, parallel, we are doing teach-in inside uh, the state house to educate our representative what is apartheid and why divestment is necessary for state like Vermont to divest uh, the workers' pensions and the teacher pension from Israel and its occupation. And education will uh, bring us to what we want and the kind of resolution we need.
And so what do you think about the whole future for the state of Vermont? It looks like you're, you're making war and peace and the Palestinian issue local, and you're asking Vermont to be really different on that issue than the rest of the country, or at least public. It will be. I'm not so yeah. certain it's yeah. different than the rest of the citizens of our country. No. But it's never put on the ballot anywhere. If the people of the United States has a decision yeah. about war and peace on the Middle East, we saw it on the numbers and the polls. Seventy percent of the Democratic Party are a pro ceasefire. Seventy percent? Seventy percent. Fifty-five percent of the Republican Party are pro ceasefire. But the official is still uh, playing the same game and uh, APAC and the lobby game, and uh, they are giving the impression uh, the, uh, the public that they are under a pressure from the outside force. Mm -hmm. And it's reflecting on the city yeah. <laughs> and their way of voting. As a matter of fact, one of the council members didn't know what apartheid means, but she voted against it. Wow. It, she didn't. So you're hoping that Vermont will not only uh, vote the, say, the right way, but also that it present a different voice. It will be pioneer on that issue. I and hope And so. everybody will follow. That's great, Wafiq. Thank you so much for all the work thank you do, you. and thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Sandy. We'll see you next month, audience. Inshallah. Yeah.